Um, for number eight, I think that's one that I need more explaining. Okay. So Newton's method is something you can use uh, to evaluate square roots. Now what Newton's method really does is it, it allows you to estimate the root of a equation. So for example, the root is where the uh, function is equal to zero. So it allows you to estimate this. And the way you do that is you just take a guess as to what the root is. So for example, in this case, they told us that our first guess should be x equals 5. We're going to guess that x equals 5 is the root. Now, in order to use Newton's method, then, we have to come up with a function whose root is the answer that we want. We have to come up with a function whose root is the answer that we want. Because this is not a function yet. This is just a number over here. Um, well, the function that would help us here is f of x equals x squared minus root 26. Where did you get that? I screwed up. Let me try again. Well, let's see why this is going to do what we want. We want a function whose root is the, is the number that we're going for. Well, notice what would happen if I plugged in the square root of 26 in for x here? If I plug in the square root of 26 here, what is this going to be? Zero. That means that the square root of 26 is the root, or uh, is the root of this function. And now we can use Newton's method to figure out what the root of this function is. So Newton's method is a way to find the roots of functions. Newton's method is a way to find the root of a function. That is, it's a way to figure out where the function crosses the x-axis. It's a way to figure out where the function is equal to 0. Um, so we have to set up a function whose root is going to be the number that we're going for in the first place. So this number over here must be the square root of 26. Whatever this number is over here, um, we know that if we square it and then subtract 26, we're going to get 0. Does it have to be a function where uh, root 26 is the only um, root? Um, it doesn't have to be, um, but that's going to make your life a lot easier. So you might as well do it. Um, because if it has other roots, then Newton's method only works if your first guess is close enough to the root that you want. If your first guess is way off, then you'll get a root that's not what you want. Um, the problems that you're going to see in this course, there's ne never going to be any reason to set up a function with more than one root. You should set up a function with one root whose root is going to be the answer that you're going for. Um, so how do you get this? Well, theoretically, the way you get this is by trial and error. You write down a function and check whether its root is the square root of 26. And if it's not, you try another function. Um, but the good thing is that hopefully the Newton's uh, method questions you see on the exam are going to be similar to the ones you've seen in the past. So you can just learn the pattern. So for example, when you're trying to figure out a square root, um, you set up a function that has x squared and sub 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 subtracting the number whose square root you're trying to take. Maybe after we finish this question, we can just do a couple more examples of how to set up the function for a couple other cases. But for now, let's just uh, let's see how we would use Newton's method here. All right, so the point is that we've now found a function whose root is the square root of 26. And uh, another way of putting it is what we're trying to do is we're trying to find an equation whose solution is the, the number you're going for. So here's an equation, and the solution of this equation would be the square root of 26, which is what we're trying to go for. All right, and uh, now you can just look up the formula for Newton's method.
So this should be, you guys get to use a cheat sheet, right? So this should be one of the formulas in your cheat sheet. So this tells you how, to, um, so basically, Newton's method is a way of getting better and better guesses for the route that you're going for. So this tells us that if you want to get a better guess than your last guess, take your guess um, and then um, plug it into this formula and that will give you a better guess. Well, in this case, we're only going to do one iteration of this. They're giving us the first guess and what's the question asking us for? What Newton's method would say the second guess is. So, So in this case, n would be 1, and n plus 1 would be 2. So on the right-hand side, we're going to plug in our first guess. And if we plug that into our formula, that will get a better second guess. After all, we know this isn't the right answer, right? We know that this is not the square root of 25, because 5 squared is just 25. You can see why this is a good first guess, though. You can come up with this guess pretty easily, even without a calculator. Obviously, the best integer guess here is 5, not 6 or 4. All right, so you can see that to use Newton's method, you're going to have to find the first derivative. So what is the first derivative of our function here? 2x. Right. Now we have to figure out what that first derivative is going to be at x1. But our x1 here, what do we plug in for x1? Right. So what will the first derivative be? Um, 10. That's right. Plugging in 5 over here, we get 10. We're doing the first derivative of the, our equation that we came up with. The first derivative of the function that we came up with, right. So the f in, so the f in Newton's method is the same f that we came up with earlier. This is why we couldn't even start using Newton's method until we came up with this function. It's useless to use Newton's method until you've come up with a function because you need to uh, be using that function in the equation. Well, we decided that this was the right function to use because it has a root, which is going to be the answer that we're looking for. So what do I plug in for x1? 5? Yeah. And what do I plug in for f of x1? Yeah, so f of 5 here would be 25 minus 26, or negative 1. So I have to be careful with the signs here. Don't forget this minus sign out in front. This is a subtraction. We're plugging in a negative 1. f prime is going to be 10. So we've got 5 plus 1 tenth, or 5.1. So what Newton met Newton's method actually does here is it says, gee, if I plug in 5, um, I'm not getting the right point on the function. But then if I go along the tangent line, that will give me my next guess, which would be 5.1. It hmm. doesn't matter whether you understand exactly what's happening in this graph, but you can just plug and chug into the formula. All right, so um, notice that this is very close to 5. Well, that shouldn't surprise us, because our guess was pretty close to being right in the first place. Uh, so this would mean that x2 would be 5.1. And now we're done, because they told us to just do one iteration. They told us just to do one iteration. If we were going to do a second iteration, what would we do? Well, for the second iteration, we would plug in 5.1 over here. And I would figure out f of 5.1 and put it in here. And I would figure out f prime of 5.1 and put it in here. And that would give us a slightly better guess, which is like, I think, 5.09, if you work it out. But um, f of x and f prime of x never change. Well, the functions don't change, okay. but the values are going to change because we're going to be plugging in different numbers for their arguments. So yeah, the general formula here is always take your last guess, here evaluate the function at your last guess, and here evaluate the derivative of the function at your last guess. And if you plug that all into your formula, that will give you your next guess. All right, so you would do like, you just plug in 5.1 into the equation that we have? You would plug 5.1 in here, that's right. 
And here you would plug in f of 5.1. So you have to plug in 5.1 here to figure out. That's right. And you would plug in f prime of 5.1 down here. I guess that would be 10.2. So you'd end up with 10.2 down here in the denominator. That would give you your second guess. And then you can take that number and go through it again and do a third guess. Uh, but without a calculator, you're probably not going to be expected to do more than one or two iterations. That's how the year, your midterms have been, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 